Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third session of this four-part webinar series of the Oracle 11G <laughs> Rackathon online conference at Brain Surface. I am Tarek Farouk, and I am honored and proud to be co-presenting this session today, along with our team of expert panelists. Joining us today is Oracle ace Jeremy Schneider. Jeremy is an Oracle certified expert in both Rack and Linux technologies and he is the author of the Rack Attack Lab, Lab Handbook. He currently works as a senior architect consultant for a financial services firm out of the greater Chicago area. Welcome and thanks for joining us today, Jeremy. Thanks, Tariq. Good to be here. Also joining us today is Oracle ace Sayed Jafar Hussain. Syed is an Oracle Certified Master, an Oracle Certified Rack Expert, and is the co-author of the upcoming Oracle 11G Handbook. He works as the Chief Database Architect at one of the largest financial institutions in the Middle East. Welcome and thanks for participating, Syed. Yeah, hi, good day everyone, and I'm pleased to be here once uh, Unfortunately, due to a scheduling conflict, Bert Scalzo, will not be able to join us. He will be here for the next uh, session, which is next Thursday. So today we're going to be demonstrating live how to set up, install, configure a two-node virtual rack cluster on Oracle VM, which is the virtualization product offering from Oracle, uh, using Oracle VM templates. These are the high-level steps on the screen that you see that we will be going through. Some of the steps due to time constraints have already been performed, such as downloading the Oracle VM templates. Uh, the, the version that we're using for today's installation and configuration is the latest and greatest. It's 11G R2, uh, specifically 11.2.0.2. And I've already taken the liberty of downloading the software as well as copying inflation concatenation of the Oracle Rack VM template files. All of this is available in a comprehensive guide available at Brain Surface right now. And you can go through the guide uh, as after the session is over. So the first step today that I'm going to kick off is starting part four here, which is the creation of the shared virtual ASM disks. Before I go ahead and do that, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the hardware that I'm using today for today's installation. Essentially, I have two Intel x86 desktop machines. These are two older desktops that I am using for this purpose that have been sitting around here uh, for about three years or so. One of the machines is even older. It's about five to six years old. Uh, if you are short on additional hardware for setting up Oracle VM, you can also do everything what we are going to do today using just one additional physical machine in addition to, of course, your laptop or your desktop. Essentially, the first step in this process is setting up Oracle VM, which is made up of two components, Oracle VM Manager and Oracle VM Server. The server component needs bare metal hardware. That is where you need the one physical machine. The Oracle VM Manager component can also be installed on your local laptop or desktop. Uh, within a virtualized environment. So you can set up Oracle VM VirtualBox, uh, and within that you can set up uh, a bare bones Oracle Enterprise Linux 5.5 machine, and on top of that you can install Oracle VM Manager. We're going to talk a little more in detail about Oracle VM Manager and Server and the Oracle VM Suite uh, after we kick off the installation process. We have a lot to cover, so let's get on with it. So this is the Oracle VM Manager console. It is a web-based uh, application. 
So the first step that I'm going to perform today is create five shared ASM virtual disks. Specifying the server pool here, the group name. So pretty simple. Um, all I'm doing here is creating file-based shared virtual disks. Now I'm going to create. Go ahead and repeat this process and create five of them here. I can name them uh, whatever I choose to name them, but I will follow a convention here so it's easier for organization purposes. Again, all of these disks are 2 GB in size. So as you can see, really simple and easy to create these disks. Oracle VM templates, which we were going to the factory package templates that are provided by Oracle. They are available from two websites. One is the e-delivery website, which provides an earlier version of the templates, which is 11.2.0.1. And the other one you can download from my Oracle support or Metalink. which is the later version which I'm using today, which is 11.202. So this is the last and final desk. And just about done. As you can see, the process is pretty fast. The underlying hard drive that I'm using for this physical Oracle VM server machine is a one terabyte uh, SATA 2, just a regular conventional hard drive, nothing fancy. Uh, it's not a SAS or a serial test SCSI, uh, but as you can see, the performance is pretty good. Uh, it was very fast as far as creating two GB hard drives, uh, physical virtual shared hard drives each. So the next step that I'm going to go ahead and do is create two virtual guest machines for the two Oracle Rack nodes. I'm going to choose the first option which is based on virtual machine template. I've already gone through the process of downloading, downloading copying inflation uh, and importing the VM templates into Oracle VM. I'm selecting my server pool here. I'm selecting the imported virtual machine template. I'm going to give it a name here. The console password. This is the VNC console password. Um, this is very important. The step that I just did was allocate two distinct virtual network interfaces to the ZenBridge network interfaces, which is ZenBridge 0 and 1. And confirm. Now this process should take roughly about anywhere between 3 to 10 minutes, depending on your, the resources that your Oracle VM server has. So while this is creating, as you can see, the process, the status of this machine is creating here. Uh, after the creation, the import, the creation of the guest VM process from the virtual machine template completes, 
the status will automatically change to powered off. And we have the refresh interval to 30 seconds. So let's go back and talk a little bit while this is going ahead about what we are doing today. Okay, so the two physical machines that I'm using are a Dell Inspiron XPS. It's been uh, lying around for about three, three and a half years. Uh, it has 4 GB of RAM. Uh, one thing that I mentioned in last week's session is that the constricting or the restricting, uh, the prohibiting factor in the virtual world is memory. So the, the number of physical, the, the number of guest machines that you can create in a virtualized infrastructure is limited by the amount of physical memory that you have. Uh, the other is an unbranded tower desktop. I've had it about, for about six years. It has a single core 3 gigahertz processor, which is not 64-bit compatible. Um, and so I've installed 32-bit versions of Oracle Enterprise Linux as well as the Oracle VM Manager. Both 32-bit as well as 64-bit versions of everything uh, are available. Um, so if you don't have a 64-bit processor, if you have an older machine, you can still utilize it. Uh, I used an external five, half a terabyte of external USB hard drive. It's important that we format the external USB hard drive after we get it from the manufacturer as a FAT32 operating system. This is a natively supported uh, file type um, file system on Oracle VM server. So, you, so typically the external USB hard drives available today have NTFS installed on them and they will not be detected when you mount it, uh, when, you, when you attach it to your Oracle VM server and you mount it, it will not be, uh, you have to go through the pain of installing additional drivers. So it's much better to just install, uh, to just format your external USB hard drive as a FAT32 uh, do your copying and stuff, and then you can reclaim it. 